Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Blacksmith webinar. I'm Nate Washer. I'm on the sales team. I bridge the software gap between customers and the internal teams here at MarkForged. A little about me. I was in the infantry and I graduated from the University of Rhode Island with BS in computer science. I've developed everything from submarine simulators to firewalls. I've even designed my own board game. It's kind of like Risk, Chess, and Catan all in one. I call it Jaffa Bit. The J is for my daughter, Julia, and half a bit is because I love paradoxes. I also have a deep passion for quantum and astrophysics. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just search for my last name and I'll pop up. Today, I'm gonna to give you a brief overview of what Blacksmith is, what it can do for you, how it works, and then I'll dive into a live demo of the software in action. After that, we'll have some time for questions. Feel free to enter them at any time into the Zoom chat. No need to wait until the end. I will answer them live in the order received, and I'll send a follow-up email answering all the questions after the event to recap what we discussed today. First up, let's have a quick blacksmith overview for those that don't already know or need a refresher. So what is blacksmith? Blacksmith is a subscription feature available through Iger and built into the MarkForge platform, what we call the digital forge. That gives your industrial printers the ability to scan and inspect your parts as they are being printed and determine if those parts were produced within your specified tolerances. At the time your blacksmith print job completes, you're provided with a scan report that tells you the physical measurements of your part features compared against the nominal measurements defined in that parts digital STL file. Using this information, we determine whether a produced part meets your required dimension tolerances and we provide you with a report showing all the important measurements and whether the part is a go or no go based on your applications, your specifications. This automated in-process quality control solution reduces time to market and gives manufacturers confidence in the parts coming off the print bed. Blacksmith establishes and streamlines the quality control process for additively manufactured parts. Get to market faster with confidence in your parts. By scanning parts while they print, MarkForge industrial printers are the only industrial grade FFF printers with in-process part verification. So there are many forms of inspecting parts and I'm gonna go over those quickly now. One way to inspect your parts is to simply perform a visual check of the part after it's been produced. Does it look about the right size? Do the angles fit snug against the machinery you're integrating it into? This is probably the least reliable form of inspection, but in some cases it is good enough. There are some obvious problems with this form of inspection. A visual check can only be so precise. The results you get from a visual check are not reliably reproducible. And one inspector may disagree with another and there's no measured data to back up either's claim. A visual check is nothing more than one person's opinion that a part has been produced within specifications. And this inspection takes an employee's time to perform. And if that part is critical, using it in production could even damage equipment and lead to downtimes. All this costs business money. You could use a pair of calipers to measure and verify the size of a part's features. This will get you more accurate results than a simple visual check can provide. And it can be quite reliable when performed by a qualified engineer. This was the standard for years, but it's quickly being replaced by newer technologies. Why? One reason is that even using a pair of calipers is only so accurate. Calipers are extremely sensitive pieces of equipment. Over or under tightening calipers or measuring in slightly different locations or angles can result in different readings. If these readings are outside your tolerances, you could get false results. And measuring accurately with calipers is time consuming. The quality engineer typically has many measurements to make on a single part. Every one of these measurements needs to be properly recorded. It's an area for human mistake. This takes time and needs to be performed by a highly qualified engineer. Many times these measurements are performed by third parties, sometimes external to the business. Parts are sent out for validation. It takes time for the parts to arrive, more time to get measured, and still more time to be returned to you. And these agencies charge a lot of money for their services. I'm sure many of you have seen all the 3D scanners out on the market. You could use one of these scanners to measure and verify your physical parts dimensions. This can provide highly accurate results that are mostly reliable and repeatable. And the technology is in its infancy. It's bound to only get better. One thing 3D scanners can't do is scan the internal structures of a part. Whether it's verifying the continuous fiber was placed correctly inside the part with any breaks or measuring the physical dimensions of internal structures that only additively manufactured parts can produce, 
3D scanners simply can't meet these needs. Some other things to consider are the scanners require a highly technical workforce to perform the inspections, clean up the results within the software, and compare these results to the nominal part design file. And then you still need to export all of this information into a customized quality report. Blacksmith automates all of this. Blacksmith can scan internal features and it verifies your internal continuous fibers were printed without any breaks that might jeopardize the strength of your parts. Blacksmith does give you the, that single glance assurance that your part was printed to spec. Blacksmith is reliable and repeatable and your results come packaged in a clear report that will always be available for you to download and share with your quality inspectors. And after a Blacksmith part is configured, it doesn't rely on a human at all to perform any measurements and takes considerably less time compared to sending parts out for external inspection, reducing your lead times considerably. It's kind of a no brainer, but as you can see, you really should not be relying on visual checks if the parts you are inspecting are critical to a business's success. If a part breaks, it was not properly inspected and brings a line of machinery down on a floor, you could lose future business with that customer and possibly be liable for any damages caused. Caliper checks are the traditional method of part inspection and is considered reliable when performed by a qualified engineer, but it takes more time and money to perform and there is supply chain risk involved if you are sending parts out for inspection. Scan checks are a good method of part inspection, but they have their own costs and still require a person to perform the inspection and to qualify those results. Markforge is using point of fabrication inspection with a built-in and touch-free tool chain for delivering high-confidence high quality control reports. Markforge printers equipped with Blacksmith ensure the customer gets the right part every time with no additional cost, lead time, or skilled labor necessary. Now that we've seen the different types of inspection and what Blacksmith brings to the table over them, let's take a look at the problems Blacksmith solves. So did you know just having a Blacksmith calibration bed and calibrating your printers with it improves their performance? Blacksmith requires a third-party certified high precision machined calibration bed, which your printer scans and adjusts its hardware offsets to give you the best possible calibration for your printer. A series of calibration procedures ensures each printer is operating at the high standards required for Blacksmith. As the calibration routine runs, the printer's X and Y offsets are automatically adjusted to provide the optimal settings for your print head, given your print head's printer's exact interior dimensions. Because your printer's offsets have been adjusted to their optimal settings, the calibration results in higher quality prints, regardless of whether you print with Blacksmith or not. These beds are available through the web store or your MarkForged reseller. At the heart of Blacksmith lies our patented intelligent scanning process. Using the laser integrated into our industrial printer's print heads, Blacksmith scans your parts as they print to ensure they were produced to your design specifications within your defined tolerances. Print consistent, predictable parts across the global fleet. Remove any headaches about part variability. You can now measure part quality without the need for post-process inspection equipment or highly trained technicians. Our going to know is how well every blacksmith printer has printed their parts. Using this data and machine learning algorithms, improvements to the printing process are already being developed to improve the quality of MarkForge printed parts for all of our printers and all of our customers. For the first time, 3D printers are going to know the quality of the parts they make as they make them. Blacksmith can help you de-risk your supply chain. Don't worry about sending your parts out for inspection. Instead, scan them in-house as they're being produced. By the time your part is done being printed, simply check the Blacksmith report to see that your part was printed within specification. No need to send parts out, risking them getting lost or damaged in the mail or at the point of inspection. Not all your parts, are printed on Mac forged equipment, let alone printed at all. Free up high cost resources for QA inspection of other parts that need the testing. And Blacksmith decreases your time to market. Skip the inspection process altogether. Don't wait anywhere from a day if you inspect internally up to three weeks if you send the parts out for inspection. Print your parts, check the Blacksmith report and send them on their way for immediate use. Save time, save money. Just check the Blacksmith quality report and use your parts with confidence they have been produced to your quality standards. Now I'll go over how the process actually works. So the first thing you need to do is calibrate your printer. In order to guarantee scan accuracy, customers will need to use an OEM certified reference bed to complete this automated inspection calibration process. We have created a series of automated calibration procedures 
and design a calibration device to ensure printers are in peak condition. The blacksmith calibration beds are high precision pieces of equipment that come with a quality assurance certificate. The blacksmith calibration utility detects and compensates for any alignment issues with the printer's motion system. You must calibrate your printer using an OEM board once a year or every time the printer is moved or when you perform any major maintenance on them. The calibration utility takes between two and four hours to complete. And this is based on your printer's thermal state, how warm it is. You can use one reference bed to calibrate multiple licensed printers. The reference bed ships in a specialized case, which should be stored inside when not in use. The reference bed is only used when running the blacksmith calibration utility. Do not scratch the surface of the, of the reference bed or attempt to print directly onto it. The calibration reference bed can either be purchased from the MarkForge store or from your value added reseller. The next thing you need to do is configure your blacksmith parts. To do this, you log into Iger, upload your part and configure it for blacksmith. As you configure your part for blacksmith, you will be able to change the scan resolution on each of your parts various features. Higher resolution settings scan more surface points that leads to an overall increased print time. When your part is being sliced, blacksmith will then intelligently generate a laser inspection toolpath to ensure good coverage of scan points throughout the entire part. Once a part is configured and a build is locked in, simply press the print button and the printing and scanning process will be completed automatically with minimal impact of time. One thing to note is that the blacksmith laser is on the front of the print head. So parts printed at the very rear of the print bed cannot be reached with the laser. As you scan, the onboard laser micrometer automatically captures information about the part surface as it is printed. A three-dimensional point cloud of data is generated from all of the scan data. Each point has a set of X, Y, and Z coordinates, which corresponds to a measurement taken of your part. During the print job, the onboard laser micrometer regularly measures the location of the part surface at the scan points. Blacksmith scans all these features within a part from the ground up, including the internal channel, channels, occluded parts, cavities, and easily scans hard to reach areas that the best of scanners struggle with. Print with a base material, then route your fiber, then scan. That's the process that repeats for each layer. There is a huge opportunity for AI and manufacturing. In the last decade, we've seen the rise of self-driving cars, where a few sensors and strong AI make the car aware of its surroundings and enable it to perform the complete task of getting you from point A to point B. Blacksmith is AI software from MarkForge that brings additive manufacturing to life. A uh, machine learning algorithm analyzes this point cloud and discovers all of the interior surfaces and features, for example, all the holes, cylinders, channels, and surfaces. And when the user logs into Iger and views the Blacksmith results for the printed part, software displays these features to the user so they can be interacted with to perform in-depth analysis of your part. You should know Blacksmith is an additive manufacturing platform that will continuously evolve and expand in capability with feature detection at its heart. In the same way AI is enabling cars to pilot themselves, AI will enable factories to run themselves. The Blacksmith AI software compares the detected features against the base model. The first time after your point cloud of data has been uploaded and processed by Blacksmith in the cloud for your build, you will need to tell the Blacksmith what features are important to you. You only have to do this once and every subsequent print job will already be configured to detect and compare your features of interest. You will need to tell the system what aspects of your part are important to you. Is the length of an edge of interest? What about the distance between two parallel surfaces? or the diameter of a cylinder and its relative position to another cylinder. And of course, how far off from perfect is required? Well, we make it easy for you. Just hover over with your mouse and select the feature that you are interested in. Once selected, you'll be able to see all that feature's measurements, select the measurements you are interested in, drop them into all your future reports, and tell us how from, far off from nominal is acceptable for that feature. It's that easy. After your point cloud of data has been processed, you can view and manipulate the part in 3D space as you can see every aspect of it. This automatically generated view gives details and insights about your printed parts. 
There are options to display either scan point information or a virtual heat map on top of the underlying digital model for visualization. If a customer needs a part to be within 100 micrometers, for example, of the intended design, they can select that on the histogram bar and all the points above that will turn red so you can evaluate if the error is acceptable for your particular application. MarkForge is known for its continuous carbon fiber pathing within your parts, granting incredible strength to your parts to rival even solid aluminum and steel in some cases. This continue, continuous fiber reinforcement offers strength properties that cannot be matched by other 3D printing technologies and materials. If your part has internal continuous fibers, such as continuous carbon fiber, you can scan those fibers as they are printed to verify they were properly placed and there was no damage, no breaks, and no missing fiber. Knowing this fiber has been installed with no breaks is as easy as checking a box in Iger. You can view your results in Iger and select your part's critical tolerance. Iger incorporates all of this laser inspection data into part quality reports. These reports compare the geometry of the input STL file to the measured geometry of the printed part and highlights dimensional accuracy deviations. The part quality report contains a details panel and a scan point deviation model of the part surface along with your defined feature inspection results. You can view the part quality report in Iger or you can download these reports with details of specific features to document your print quality. Blacksmith quality reports make determining whether a part passed or failed inspection an easy go, no go. Now we're gonna give you a little software demo. So the first thing you have to do to begin printing blacksmith parts is you need to calibrate your printer. I can't demonstrate this, it'll take too long for this demo, but there's an easy to use printer calibration utility. The utility is found in the printer's menu and the utility runs on your printer. When you do run this calibration, Make sure you clean your laser of debris and smudges. The calibration steps tell you everything you have to do on the printer screen. It's really easy to follow. The calibration procedure requires a calibration bed. You can buy these print beds from the online store or again, talk to your VAR. Maybe they can even calibrate it for you. Make sure you load your printer with onyx and carbon fiber. Start with your regular print bed but wait and wait until you're prompted to load the calibration bed. Follow the on-screen prompts, and this will take around between two and four hours to complete. You'll wanna rerun the calibration whenever your printer is moved or maintenance is performed. After you've calibrated your printer, you will need to upload some parts to Iger in order to prepare them for printing with Blacksmith. And I've got a part file. So I'm gonna import that part file into Iger. I'm gonna select the gripper jaw base STL file, click open and click import STL. And you'll notice the part pops up in Iger. Now I want to make sure that this part is being printed with Onyx and I'm gonna make sure that uh, this part is nice and strong and rigid. So I'm gonna use carbon fiber for my reinforcement material. And I'm gonna to select to enable blacksmith so that this part can be demonstrated in this demo. After that, I click the save button. Now my STL file is being sliced and it's even being analyzed by the machine learning algorithms. The STL files are made of triangles, but the features are not triangles. Your features are typically your cylinders and your spheres and other surfaces. The machine learning algorithms are detecting those features and we need them to be able to configure Blacksmith itself. So after my part is sliced, I can now configure its Blacksmith scan settings. I'm gonna click the configure Blacksmith button and the blacksmith configuration view pops up. You notice the background turns a dark gray indicating we're in the blacksmith view. In this blacksmith view, you can rotate your part around, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. You can also highlight over select features that the machine learning algorithms detected. Take a look at the right panel. Notice the overall part scan resolution. This enables you to configure the overall scan resolution of the part. The overall geometry of this part is not really critical or important. Before we decide the overall scan resolution, let's uh, go over the differences between low, medium, and high. So imagine the software in Iger is drawing some virtual circles or squares across the part's surface. 
the resolution that you select determines the size of those circles and squares. When a low resolution is selected, those circles are around six millimeters in diameter. When medium is selected, those circles are around three millimeters in diameter. And when high is selected, the circles are 1.5 millimeters in diameter. These circles get smaller and smaller as the resolution gets higher and higher. But what does this mean? Well, at least one scan point is going to be inside each of those circles. That is how we define scan resolution for features of your part. So the smaller the circles, the more the scan points over your part. Now that we've gone over that, let's choose low. This is gonna save me time in printing. Now I'm gonna select some critical features. Uh, the critical features that are important to me are these cylinders. So I'm gonna select all these cylinders of the part. And you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, we've created a surface group. I'm gonna set the scan resolution of the surface group to high because these features are critical. Those virtual circles that we were talking about will be about 1.5 millimeters in diameter. And then we're gonna finalize editing, editing this uh, surface group by clicking finish editing. This part has continuous carbon fiber. I wanna ensure that fiber was printed properly. So I'm gonna to toggle verify fiber to yes. And then I'm gonna click save. Now the part is now going to re-slice. The software is generating all those scan points based on the part scan resolution, the surface groups, and of course, fiber verification. Now before the slicing scan, the time was um, 19, mil 19 minutes. Uh, after we've made these changes, to the part and re-slice the part. Um, we're gonna see that scan time change. Now it's down to 10 minutes. And that's because you know, uh, we decreased the majority of the parts resolution from medium to low. A typical scan time takes between five and 10% of the print time. Now we are ready to print. So let's print this part. Click the print button. We come into the build view. This is where we can add additional copies of these parts to the build. If you want to add another part to the build, it's really easy. After the build is set, just come here and click add build. You can add another copy. After the build is set, we're gonna lock this print this uh, build in place. Once you've uh, locked the build in place, you can't modify it. You can create new builds with these blacksmith parts but you just can't modify an existing build. Once it's been locked in place, it's locked in place. That's for quality tracking purposes. So you can't make changes to it and try to fool your auditors. Printing a part would take too long for this demo. So we're going to pretend we just printed our parts. So now that our part has been printed and scanned, let's go back into Iger. We're going to open the Blacksmith Builds page in Iger. It's over here on the left-hand side in the menu and click builds. This is where all the blacksmith builds are stored. The selected printed build that we pretended to print, we're gonna select that printed build that we pretended to print. The build page is gonna load and this page defaults to the most recent print job. If there are multiple print jobs of the same build, we can access those other print jobs by selecting this menu button, menu drop down here and selecting the other builds. But this one only has one. But you'll have all your previous builds listed down here available to you to select. The colorful dots are the scan points. The different colors and the brightness have different meanings. The color and brightness represents how far off from the nominal STL file dimensions the scan results were. The duller points are closer to nominal, whereas the brighter points are further from nominal. Selecting a part brings you into a new page where you can examine the scan results in greater detail. Now we are inspecting the selected part. Now, if we're interested in a different part of the same build print job, we can click the build view button. It'll bring us back to that previous page and we can select another part. Like the build view, the part view is in 3D. You can rotate your part to see all the features. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. 
And the dots are scan points, just like in the build view. The blue dots show where less material is in the location than nominal STL file indicates there should be. Whereas the red dots show where more material is in the location than nominal expects. The brighter the dots show the results are further from nominal, whereas duller dots shows that the results are closer to nominal. Obviously the ideal color here is gray. At the bottom of the screen is a histograph, histogram, sorry. Bars, the, the various bars in this histogram represent the number of scan points that are that far off from nominal. So the tall bars represent lots of points, whereas the short bars represent few or no points. You can hover over this histogram to see each bar's values, or you can click on the histogram to show only points that are outside your desired tolerance. The default scan point deviation bars are mostly centered. This is because we're looking at assigned scan point deviation. If we click on the histogram title, another menu pops up where we have two options. The first option is sign versus absolute. If we select absolute, the histogram bars move from the center to the left. This is because you're no longer concerned the scan point detect the scan point detection is above or below nominal definition. We're only measuring how far off from nominal we are. The other option is surface point deviation versus scan point deviation. If we select surface point deviation, you're going to see that the part view changes. Instead of those red and blue dots, we now have red and blue areas of the part surface. This view gives a smoother view of the final part that's been produced. Like the Blacksmith scan configuration screen, we can select features detected by machine learning. When selected, a menu populates in the right panel. Grab a couple features here. You'll notice that uh, this selected feature, you've got all these measurement details about this cylinder that I've selected. In addition, um, selecting a second feature will populate more data in this menu. And now, in it, now we have both features listed here, the, the pink or the magenta colored one and the um, teal colored one um, with all the measurements of each in, respectively. But then in addition to that, we have this relationships uh, section on the screen, which is gonna show the relations between these various um, features that you've selected. Now say I'm interested in um, tracking this distance from center line to center line of these cylinders. I wanna make sure that this, the, this me measurement is on my um, blacksmith quality reports at the end of the, uh, at the end of this when we wanna inspect the uh, quality report. All I have to do is click the plus button. In the left panel, we'll notice that there's a critical dimensions section. All these critical dimensions are included in the blacksmith report. Let's set the allowable tolerance to 0.2 millimeters. You'll notice that a uh, green check mark shows that that measurement is within my specifications. The last important note on this page is if fiber verification was turned on when this part was printed, the results of this fiber verification is in the upper left panel. If it says fiber verified, which it does, this means that the internal fibers were printed successfully without any detectable errors. Our part is strong and we can rely on it for production purposes. Now let's check out the blacksmith quality report for this part. Click on the download scan report button and a separate tab will open with that scan report. The first section is the part information section. This contains basic information about your part, contains the part name, when it was printed, the materials that were used, the fill type and density, layer heights, overall dimensions, and even some notes. The next section shows the histogram and scan point information. Overall, it gives the overall scan resolution as well as your mean and standard deviations. The third section is the process control section, which contains printer information. If we scroll down further, we'll see front and rear surface deviation heat maps. And these are for your uh, visual reference. Finally, all the defined critical dimensions that we define on, on the previous screen are on this report. 
There's graphical representations of the measurements, as long as well as the measurement values themselves, which um, and an easy to read pass fail box so that you know your part is good to go. You can save this report to your hard drive and import it into your quality monitoring system for any future audits you might face, or you could simply rely on Iger to store this information for you. All the data is available, will be available at your fingertips for years to come. So that wraps up the software demo portion of the software. The next thing I wanted to talk with you about are a couple of Mark Forge customers that are using Blacksmith today. And in their own words, we will hear how Blacksmith is central to their processes. The first customer is Hangar One and the next is Vestas. Hangar One Avionics is a San Diego based maintenance, repair and installations service provider with customers in airborne law enforcement, business aviation and general aviation. Specific customer needs require unique and custom parts such as a pilot seat console, until a few years ago, Hangar One built all of these custom and low volume parts for customers through CNC machining. Hangar One discovered that many of the parts that proved difficult to fabricate through CNC machining were strong candidates to be built through 3D printing. Incorporating additive manufacturing into their operations made manufacturing of these parts significantly faster as well as much simpler. Using 3D printing to replace aluminum parts with lighter yet equally strong carbon reinforced composite parts led to significant weight improvements for helicopters that swapped metal parts with composites. This translates to additional capacity for cargo and fuel. With additive manufacturing, one time consuming aspect of the traditional manufacturing process still remained for 3D printed parts. Before those parts could be used to, or installed in aircraft, they had to pass through a rigorous full inspection. This manual process was time consuming, on average, they took 30 to 45 minutes to complete for each part, and they made a lot of parts. Hangar One estimates that using Blacksmith saves 30 minutes per part on average, as re reviewing the report only takes a few minutes. Blacksmith also ensures their inspection data is available for future reference because its data is stored in the cloud rather than on paper. This is critical due to the traceability and FAA requirements for keeping aircraft part records over a long period of time. Before Hangar One could introduce a formal change to the way it inspected parts, the company knew it had to rigorously test the value of this new process to satisfy its own staff as well as its customers. This required verifying that Blacksmith had the level of accuracy and consistency that the company needed for aircraft parts. After printing several parts with Blacksmith, the parts were also inspected with conventional measuring tools. When the two sets of data were compared, Blacksmith was found to be more accurate. Explain why we, explaining why we use Blacksmith is simple. Blacksmith does the same thing that the old manual inspection process did. The difference is that Blacksmith digitizes the process, which makes it faster, easier, and more reliable. That's Matthew Roth, head of machining at Hangar One. Vestis is the world's largest on and offshore wind turbine and wind turbine blade manufacturer. With over 150 gigawatts of wind turbines in 86 countries, Vestas was installed, has installed more wind power than any of its competitors. Wind turbines are massive and expensive machines that must function reliably with minimal downtime in order to be as effective as possible. That means there's no room for error when it comes to manufacturing and installation. As a result, Vestas depends on numerous inspection gauges as it, at its manufacturing locations and sites. These critical tools have traditionally been sourced from multiple vendors around the world based on detailed manufacturing instructions. The finished parts would be sent to various Vestas sites, inspected for compliance, and once approved, put to use. Unfortunately, some of the final parts supplied by local manufacturers were not always 100% to spec and did not pass that final inspection. This resulted, of course, in final product delivery and installation delays. Even when parts made it through the specialized inspection process, most were manufactured using time consuming and costly machining methods and raw materials. Take for example, the top center marking tools. These tools are used by Vestas to mark the root end of turbine blades so that they can align pitch properly. They would typically take about five weeks to produce and to make matters worse due to the limits on machine designs, the Vestas team would have to order multiple versions of these TC marking tools to fit a range of blades. The Vestas team began researching alternative ways to improve their overall machining manufacturing process. 
using MarkForge's cloud-based AI-powered Digital Forge additive manufacturing platform, the company successfully launched its digital direct digital manufacturing program or DDM program in 2021. The program frees up uh, manufacturing processes from relying on outside suppliers and provides a knowledge base for collaboration. The DDM program already includes over 2000 Vestas parts stored in Iger. This allows employees at any Vestas location with little to no additive manufacturing expertise to quickly search for and print any number of fiber reinforced composite parts for on their local X7 printers. According to Jeremy Haight, principal engineer for additive manufacturing and advanced concepts at Vestas, also just a really great guy, our approach is end to end. We provide the physical article in near real time to a variety of places. It's the closest thing to teleportation I think you can get. Thanks to the repository, the Vestas team knows they will get consistent up to spec parts at a moment's notice anywhere in the world without the need for specialists at their global facilities. This has dramatically reduced shipping and freight costs and manufacturing lead times. The TC marking tool that previously took weeks and thousands of dollars to produce is now being made in only a few days. And because the tool is printed using fiber reinforced onyx, the formerly metal parts now weigh 85% less than before. So in conclusion, Blacksmith is the premier in-process inspection technology that guarantees every 3D part you print is ready to use in production right off the print bed. So that's Blacksmith. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and have learned a lot from it. As you can see, our Iger software platform makes it easy to use Blacksmith. After you purchase at least one Blacksmith license, additional Iger settings and workflows will become available to you, enabling you to take full advantage of Blacksmith. And this is just the beginning. Keep your eyes peeled for upcoming enhancements to Blacksmith and to the Iger platform in general. So it looks like we have some time for questions. First, I do have some FAQs to get us started. Then I'm going to go through the Zoom chat in the order that they were received. I won't answer the same question twice. So if I skip yours, it's because I felt like I already answered it, but don't worry, I'll answer all of them in a email after we have this uh, demo so that everybody has their questions answered. Uh, feel free to continue adding new questions as I answer these. Um, if I don't get to your question in this webinar, I will answer them in a follow-up email to all registrants. So the first question uh, of my FAQ is, uh, well, is Blacksmith available offline? Uh, Blacksmith is available as uh, part, is only available as part of our online cloud offering. This is because we take advantage of the processing power and infrastructure available to us in AWS. If Blacksmith is something your business really wants for offline Iger and your business is willing to fund its development, Talk to a MarkForge representative or email myself and express this interest. How much time does Blacksmith scanning typically add to your print? Scan times are typically 5 to 10% of the print time. This varies depending on part size, geometry, and selected resolutions. What kind of laser does Blacksmith use? The laser found on our industrial printers is a class 2 laser. It's the same type of laser used to measure the flatness of a hard drive. It's extremely accurate. How accurate is Blacksmith? Well, you we say that low resolution scans have an accuracy within 120 micrometers. The medium resolution scans have an accuracy within 60 micrometers. And high, re high resolution scans have an accuracy within 30 micrometers. What size must features be to be detectable by Blacksmith? Well, the minimum size features detectable vary by scan resolutions. So the with low resolution settings, we can detect features as small as 12 millimeters. And with medium resolution settings, we can detect, detect features as small as six millimeters. And with high resolution settings, we can detect features as small as three millimeters. So now I'm gonna go through the Q&A questions. So the first question is, how much time does the typical blacksmith inspection process add to the total print time? So as I said, it's uh, kind of between five and 10%. Next question is, how do you, you inspect parts that have organic surfaces and very little primitive geometry? What tools are available for setting up inspection and measurements? I'm um, thinking about tools that are available in Geomagic uh, Control X. Well, I haven't used that software specifically, um, but the tools, uh, as, as I explained, is a machine learning algorithm that's gonna go over the part it's gonna look at this part and it's gonna determine all the different surfaces, the different features that are in this part. 
And then it's going to, of course, scan those, uh, scan those part surfaces as the part prints. It's gonna build that point cloud of data, upload it to the machine algorithm, and then it's going to figure out um, the actual uh, surface geometry that was printed. And it's gonna compare that against the base model that's uh, defined in the STL file. I hope that answers your question. I'll try to take a better stab at it um, after this uh, demo in the replies. The next question is uh, a first time blacksmith laser scan uh, scanned part uh, print job versus, uh, let me read this. How fast are the subsequent print jobs of the same part um, can be accomplished? So approximate time difference. So, um, so every time that you print out a part with blacksmith, it's going to be the same amount of time, right? It's gonna be the print time and the scan time. So independent of whether it's on one build or another, it's gonna take the same amount of time. Um, if you're talking about the time from um, before the part was uh, added blacksmith and, and after it was at blacksmith was added to it, uh, between five and 10%. Um, can we print without calibrating the printer? Uh, no, actually you cannot. Um, the, the calibration is required to be able to learn the geometry of the printer. Um, it, 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 quite honestly, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to anyways, you're gonna get a better, um, better quality prints um, when you have that printer having been calibrated and it really does make a difference. I've used the uh, bed myself and I've compared um, previous scans to uh, scans after I've used the print bed. Um, did I understand that blacksmith monitors construction in progress, checks for any deviations, and if so, corrects them during the current 3D printing? It's a great question. Um, so, or, you know, or the corrections are just recorded incorporating in subsequent print launches. Thanks for the explanations. So that, that is a fantastic question. Um, the right now, the it does not fix those uh, for the current print. It does fix them for uh, future prints. Uh, Blacksmith is constantly learning and constantly improving. Um, so when you slice a new file, you're you're going to upload this part data. It's going to go through the whole algorithm, analyze this information, um, and then Blacksmith is going to learn based on that information. And then in the future. It's going to know when you print, when you slice files have similar geometries, it's going to now know how better to produce those tool paths in order to print the, print the part as well as, um, and of course, scan the part. Um, so there is a learning aspect involved right now, um, but in the future, I will, you know, the future is limitless. Um, I would, you know, I would say that uh, there's a real, very real possibility that what you're asking about, um, will Blacksmith be able to correct the printing during the actual current printing process, I would say there is a future state where that is a very real possibility. Um, could Blacksmith help with automatic markings on parts to connect a specific part to a specific report? Another excellent question. Um, so, you know, right now, uh, you know, in order to mark a part, um, you know, you, you would have to take that part off the print bed and probably mark it yourself, or if you were to, uh, you know, add some marking into the digital file itself, um, and then that part would be marked so that uh, you could make sure that you're tying it back to, you know, say it's, you've got a part um, part information on this part, and you've marked it. Um, it, it ties back to the part inside of Iger. Um, I would say that there's definitely a future state where there's some features built within Iger that gives you the ability to um, to do what you're asking. Uh, to be able to mark these parts in some manner, um, but that's uh, you know not available today. Um, I don't have any kind of um, uh, answer of when it might be coming, but I would say I, I would see that's definitely something that could be coming in the future. Um, it's possible to is it possible to use Blacksmith to scan a uh, physical part um, not printed? Uh, great question. No, um, not today. Um, but uh, again. Um, there, there may be uh, some capabilities that could arrive so that you could use a 3D scanner and incorporate that data um, in the existing ecosystem. Um, but we'll, we'll see what, what happens in the future. Um, roughly, what is your certification process for the calibration bed? So uh, it is machined by a third party. Um, you know, MarkForge doesn't make these ourselves. We have the, a third party that makes the beds and they, uh, they run it through a third, another third party um, analysis that, and we get a full, um, a full uh, report on that part, um, the bed, the print bed that uh, you can use to show your um, 
your auditors that uh, this part is uh, within the specification. And that calibration bed does need to be um, reanalyzed every year. Um, so, and there, there is a process for you to be able to do that. Um, I'll get you more information about that process after this meeting. Is it possible to print out uh, dental implants as well? So I think dental implants generally, um, they require different, different materials. So uh, our base material is typically onyx or uh, nylon white. Um, those are the two main plastics that we use. Uh, there's also PLA and now TPU um, and even Ultim if you're using an FX20 printer. But um, right now the, you know, we don't, we don't have any materials that I know of that are um, good for use inside of a human body. Um, so I think uh, right now the answer is no. Uh, is there an inspection software in the works for metal printing? Great question. Um, you know, I, I would say that this is there's definitely a future state, um, something something along the lines of being able to either scan the part uh, post -pro post production or or within um, you know within um, within the process itself, the, the printing process of the part itself. Um, I don't have any further information about that at this time, um, but I'd say keep your eyes open uh, for any advancements in that area. If blacksmith detects the part deviation is outside of the tolerance range, can it pause or cancel the print? Another great question, kind of in line with one of the previous questions. Um, you know, I would say that this is uh, this is something that we, we were thinking about. Um, and I would say that, you know, there is a future state where this might be possible. Are there any differences between um, SLM and your method in manner of strength and surface pattern? Absolutely. Um, you know, the uh, our FFF, uh, Printers have the ability to use continuous carbon fiber. Um, you, you can't get the strength that you know you you get from continuous carbon fiber um, using um, other methods of, of manufacturing um, because you know that the, the the carbon fiber is a continuous strand. It's it, it's a long strand and it's rolled out um, and printed into the part. It's laid down fiber by fiber around the certain around the edge of the part as well as uh, isotropically across the part um, layer by layer. Um, you know, unless the, unless the other um, uh, technology that we're being compared against has the ability to do that. And of course they have the patent to be able to do that, which we have the patent on um, being able to print continuous carbon fiber, but they can't compete. Is blacksmith compatible with all materials that the X7 utilizes? Currently, no. Um, currently it is Onyx. Uh, the onyx material and um, the carbon fiber material. Um, I know that we're considering other materials uh, and I'll have to look in to see if it supports FRA and ESD. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'll get back to you um, after this uh, demo is complete. So uh, let's see, any other questions? Let's look up here, anything in the chat? Okay. Cool. All right. So uh, that are that is. Oh, we got another one. Yep. No. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you. So um, that completes our webinar for the day. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, I really appreciate being able to talk to you today, and of course, have a great rest of your day.